and thanks for joining. I only have a couple of people, but let's give it a couple more minutes and see if more folks join. Hi, everyone. Hi, Cassandra. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, Dale. You want to take up the notes uh, this time? Or anybody else would like to uh, be a scribe? I can, I can, uh, I can transcribe. Feel free to add notes as well. You know. All right, so in the interest of time, we're going to get started with introductions real quick. Um, if you have been in these meetings, you can just say that you're a regular. <laughs> I don't think you need to elaborate a lot more, but um, it's up to you, whatever you want to uh, talk about in this meeting, too. So if you have anything you would like to bring up, feel free to mention that in the, in the introduction. So I'll get started. So I'm Ricardo. Uh, I'm one of the co-chairs of Tag Runtime, and I've also been running this Cloud Native AI uh, meetings, and I'm also a regular. Uh, we can go with Selvi. Uh, sure. Thanks, Ricardo. This is my first meeting, uh, but I've been reading uh, the AI white paper as it's been forming for a few weeks now. So thank you so much for it. I'm learning a lot from it. I am from a, I'm a, the engineering lead at a startup called Elotl. We build multi-cluster Kubernetes products. And yeah, my background is uh, ML and big data processing for a few years and now in the Kubernetes space. So uh, this paper is serving to be really uh, valuable for me. Thank you. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, Cassandra, I just thought of your being there. Is it? Hi, I've been here before, but I'm a college student and I've taught kids workshops at CNCF Kids Day, which is at KubeCon. Yeah, thanks for adding that content to the paper. So I've actually changed a little bit of the section. So we divided that into recommendations and, and challenges, but uh, we'll go over it in, in the meeting. So. Uh, 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 Kathy? Oh yeah, hi everyone. My name is Kathy Zhang. I'm uh, uh, from the I'm a TOC of CNCF. I'm also in a, uh, in a lead for, the, uh, for this working group with Ricardo together. Awesome, thanks. Uh, Adele? Yeah, hey everyone. Um, I am Ad Zaluk. I'm a product manager uh, for OpenShift at Red Hat. Um, and I'm a regular as well to, by now <laughs> to this meeting. Awesome. Yeah, uh, Victor? Yeah, regular, independent uh, consultant. Awesome. Welcome back, uh, Joel. Hey, Joel Roberts, I'm an architect with Cisco, focused mostly on connectivity and infrastructure. Uh, first time making this meeting and looking forward to getting the time to read through the paper. Awesome. Welcome, Joel. All right. So um, we can get started with um, the white paper. Um, I don't think we have... so. Uh, I don't think we have everybody who, um, who actually commented on the paper here, but uh, we can go over some of the comments uh, just to give you a little bit of a um, background on, on some of the changes we've made. Uh, we created this new uh, document uh, with the new structure that we talked about last time. So that's complete. So we divided, we divided the 
paper into these different sections where we have an introduction, executive summary introduction, then we have challenges uh, and opportunities. And so we have a, a specific um, section for challenges with artificial intel intelligence, uh, challenges with training, uh, and challenges and, and sorry, and opportunities uh, and out of these opportunity sections at the bottom. And then finally with conclusions. Uh, any comments on, on 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 this structure? Does it look good for everyone, or does anybody want to make uh, any suggestion or change? Maybe to add, this is based on our last discussion. Uh, so the structure change here is like when we you know we had the meeting last time and we agreed that there are certain aspects that we have to divide up and agree upon. And this is basically born from that discussion. Uh, so it should match whatever we discussed. If it doesn't align with that expectation, please, yeah, uh, let us know. Sounds good. So anybody else has any suggestions, comments? Just want to uh, let everybody weigh in. All right. We got Andre to join. Thanks, Andre, for joining. Hi, everyone. Yeah, hi. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I went through this. I think this is based on the last uh, meeting's discussion the structure. Um, I made a, a small change in the challenges in training. I did say challenges in training and the inference because some of those challenges apply to inference too. So yeah, if, if you're okay with that. Yeah, so so basically change this bullet point to in training and inference, both yeah. or? And the inference, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I forgot to update the, the session, the, 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 you know, the I content. I think you can, you can immediately just That's refresh the, if it's I a table it's of content. Here. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, it's already here. So, so the table of content is this like automatically updated then? Or yeah, you should. Yeah, exactly. You should. Okay. Just... Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's clear update. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you. Awesome. So, um, so I think uh, we don't necessarily have to go through to these, right? But um, I think there's some comments about um this uh the visuals so anybody has any comment on these visuals or, or i think we we do actually need a little bit more visuals on the paper we we currently have this one and and i think we have oh, uh, this one at the bottom with the landscape but um anything on the visuals that uh, folks on the call think that we need to add to the paper? Yeah, so this one I basically added because I I thought it would help um, build relationships on how the different pieces of cloud native fit to one another, especially like I, I initially got inspired by the other uh, document on the AI landscape and then looking at landscape, okay. the landscape, it, it looked like there are a lot of things that are not immediately uh, originated from the cloud native community, but rather their data science and so on tooling. So how how does cloud native tooling, including general orchestration, delivery, and so on, first of all, serve those tools? Second, relate to the different pieces of the cloud native. So I picked the parents of each part of the landscape and just Put relationships and that's why i said like subject to changes so if anyone thinks it doesn't make sense or um needs to be improved somehow please let me know and this is you know we could make it more beautiful i just changed the font made it bigger if we if we want it to look differently we could also do that but i, I guess i am more concerned about 
the content and the relationships, whether they make sense to everyone. It, it makes sense to me. Uh, any other comments? All right. So I said, where's the link to the updated paper? I'm sorry. So, uh, where can I find the updated paper? I uh, yeah. Let me um share that link on the chat. Yes. yes. It's right there. I just put it on the chat. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering whether, you know, um, so here we're talking about what is cloud native AI, right? I'm wondering whether we should have a separate section for the cloud native AI, the tools. I think Cookflow, is it said that it's a it's an example of the tools to support that? Um Yeah, so this this is your comment here, um, Kathy. Yeah. Like the you you rather put not put Kubeflow in in the introduction or what is uh, cloud native AI? Yeah, I, 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 okay, that's open for discussion, right? I, um, I'm thinking yeah. so here we are defining what is cloud native AI, right? Uh, I'm just wondering whether we should put you know this flow this tool into here this section or should we should put it into another separate section say okay there is a cognitive AI tools um you know example of something like that a tool and then we'll put this example there because I I, I would like try to avoid you know uh, making a king of you know any right a king maker yeah yeah, yeah a king maker because remember in our last TOC meeting we specifically um, there's just there's a, there's a specific emphasis on that, so I like Cookflow project personally. I'm just wondering whether it's appropriate. Got it. Any other, any other comments or? No, I agree with Katie. Um, I think like we maybe make it as you know, um, just a link to the section around tools. Um, because like I remember we're gonna have like section where we just um explain the existing tools, right? Uh, in open source. I don't know if I have this on the new paper. Uh, no, it's only challenges, right? Your recommendation and opportunities, right? Yeah, so you want to put it under what? The challenges or? or... I think we need to like, have a separate section for tooling or we need to put it to the um, uh, opportunities, right? Because okay. like we need to some have a section around like uh, what we have today, right? Yeah, I think that's a good suggestion. Uh, you know, we have either we have a separate section yeah, for tools or we put this into the opportunities because one, this is one of the you know, um, opportunities or a solution to solve this, right? So the, the challenges and the opportunities should be quite generic. Um, but I agree, Casey, that, that, you know, you're talking about the concept versus the implementation. Kubeflow is an implementation that solves one of the challenges, ideally, or is an opportunity as a solution presented. So I guess, can we fit it in one of the existing challenges if we think about the problems that Kubeflow does solve? What does it solve? And can we put it there? is probably the the question as an example of how it solves the problem okay. so, like we have challenges around microservice architecture model serving uh, i think yeah um yeah it can probably fit around no not model serving Maybe if, if, if we don't have a perfect match, we should, you know, because it does solve a bunch um, of problems. Yeah, sorry for interrupting. I think like the the, 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 the bigger question is here, what Kubeflow tries to address, Kubeflow tries to connect ML ecosystem, cloud native ecosystem in general, despite on ML lifecycle, where it is training, serving, tuning, pre-processing, you know, pipelines, uh, or any other things, fine tuning, right? And the problem is like where, you know, like we should edit 
then. Okay, so you're saying that it solves multiple challenges at once and it's easier yeah. adding Qflow every time uh, or having one place to just say it's solved for all of those. Yeah, yeah, but that, yeah, we're good it. yeah, that is why, you know, I think, you know, um, it's good to separate the challenges and the solutions because one solution could solve multiple challenges, right? So it's uh, if that, you know, in that case, you know, it's easier, right? We have challenges, we list all the challenges. And then in the solutions, we can list the solutions. And in, for each solution, you can see what challenges it solved. That will be easier than, you know, we mix the challenge and solution together. Then we have to, for example, Kubeflow, it solves multiple challenges. We have to, you know, yeah. mention, yeah, it's a little bit, um, I think that's, I, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know if we need to add it to every chat Qflow to every challenge and, and opportunity. I think we could probably add it as a recommendation or uh, uh, a tooling for rec uh, recommendation yeah. of, of a type of tool that we can we can use. So I, I'm thinking this might be a better uh, session, right? Then that because we said that the challenges and opportunities m may want to be generic. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think yeah, last we do... oh, go ahead, Casey. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. I think in last meeting we also mentioned about this. We say, you know, it's good to separate them. Um, you know, um, the challenges and the uh, and the solutions or example solutions. Um, maybe we should first agree on this, whether this is good or not good, and then we know how we should do this. You know, currently I it looks like still we are putting the solution inside the challenges is it right yeah right yeah cassie can you maybe i should ask another question mm -hmm. how many of the solutions do we have that map to one or more challenges uh and if that's if that's much then yes i think it might make sense even though we still can live with it but if it's just one or two instances then i think the current structure should still serve it with reference implementation. That would be my thinking. Because this paper is finite, right? It will be published at some point. Yeah. So Yeah, we can elaborate on on reference architecture or solutions to the different challenges on like different documents or papers or or blocks or different types of engagements. We also do have the AI landscape which is divided into a lot of solutions right uh, and then yes and here Qflow is most definitely uh, uh, mentioned uh, so people can also look into what exists in the landscape and we can reference the pieces we can figure out how to make it linkable from the white paper uh, the landscape we can do the same bit the two at the same time that would be most ideal okay yeah i think that sounds good so we can add this comment here we'll we'll, we'll just uh decide to decide to move this somewhere else or we'll probably take it out of, out of this section of the why what is cloud native intelligence or artificial intelligence All right, um, so uh, let's go over some of the other comments. Okay, so this is the the visual. So we need a uh, reference links for uh, for my produce Spark and Ray. Uh, so. Over the, uh, the past two decades, open source distributed computer engines have evolved through three generations. This evolution, MapReduce, Spark, and Ray, this evolution signifies a gradual shift in focus from data processing workloads to AI ML workloads. And then, so Malini had a suggestion uh, to add reference links. Uh, so I don't know if she means, I guess, like the 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 links to MapReduce, uh, Spark, and Ray, or uh, she means. Uh, more of uh, 
more of a like like a document that, that talks about all the evolution of these. Um, and then Ronald said, uh, maybe we can reward this. Uh, have evolved through multiple generations, data intense, micro batch uh, to compute intense instead of just mentioning the the projects uh, here. So, what are your takes on this? Uh, anybody has any? Should we just re uh, remove this and add uh, something like uh, evolution of batch, micro batch to compute intense, or, or or should we just keep the the project names here. Yeah, I I think the concepts that we're following to be consistent, we're we're separating the concepts from the implementation. It would help maybe saying, you know, the concepts behind Spark, Ray, and MapReduce, and then saying, for example, if we want to mention the project names, that would be the generic approach, in my opinion. Okay. Anybody else has anything? I, I agree because there is Dusk as well, right? Dusk is heavily used for ML use cases. Uh, I mean, there are numerous tools that people are using for data preparation. And, you know, like we, we should try to generalize it. Okay. Sounds good. So, so we'll change that. Anybody else? Yeah, I think this is straightforward. Okay, so this uh, we don't have one main and run also. I don't know what the does anybody anybody looked at this video or I don't know what this video is about. So see what this is thank you everyone for joining today we'll be talking to kubraid raid and kubernetes so so this is 19 so what do you have where's 19 19 uh also yeah. So the same. How how do, how does multimodal approaches relate to Ray and Kubernetes? Yeah. So this is not very clear. Yeah. In a sense, that's the question we're trying to answer. Because you know, multimodal or models. How do models relate to cloud native? Uh, is trying what well, we generally trying to explain how does cloud native serve let's say in this instance multimodal but in that specific mention i don't think it's clear that we're doing that yeah, yeah. so Does that sound good to everybody? Cool. Yeah. So we might have to just remove this one. So we'll follow up with the uh, main and run off. Uh, Sky computing, a reference to Sky computing. Anybody has any comments about Sky computing? Or should we add a uh, yeah, it, it's quite relevant, I would say. Um, we, we should add. So Sky, it's not just X. Yeah, I mean, Sky Computing is basically saying instead of using one provider for everything and being locked in, Sky Computing basically allows you to utilize the best of any provider for things like inference or training, uh, whatever is best for cost or... Uh, time to value, more or less. So in that sense, it doesn't lock you in 
from an accelerator perspective. So if you need TPUs, use, let's say, GCP. If you need GPU, you can use some other provider, so on. So I think it's it's a relevant project to the space, definitely. It's It started as an academic thing, but yeah, very relevant. Perfect. Is there like... Um... <clears throat> This is like a new stack uh, blog, but is there like... No, there is a, yeah, the, mm, there is actually a paper. Uh, okay. I, I think the sky over the clouds is the name of the paper. I read it a while ago. So uh, the sky beyond the clouds. Uh, or something like that. Uh, I, I'll figure out the paper and like I get the, we'll get the paper and... Sounds good. And add it. Yeah, I, I pasted a link. I think it's this one. This is a really good reference from UC Berkeley on that. Uh, yes, I, that's the one. Thank you, Sophie. Uh, oh, great. You got it. So, okay, we have it there. Uh, okay. So this is Settle Sky. Uh, so we have Ronald on the call. And so Hey, Iran. So we were talking about this this video. I think we we might just remove this uh, reference here, right? For explaining. Sorry, what was the nineteen? The rise of multimodal approaches, right here, and it references this video here. Agree. Which, which is yeah. like uh, supercharged this. Um, yeah, I mean, there might be on, you know, at the 19th minute, something about multimodal, modal, but yeah, it's not, yeah, yeah it didn't remove it. Yeah, my comment was just that uh, some tool enabled it, but uh, I don't think that was the intent, so yeah, let's just get rid of it. Awesome. Okay. That's settled. So, um, pot light slice. Uh, we'll is this like the Kubernetes uh, pot slice or what? Yeah, uh, I didn't actually, I vaguely think I know what it is, but maybe I'm wrong. But but that's my point. My I didn't add this. Uh, my point yeah. is, is what is this stuff? Like this is, um, I'm sure it's out there and maybe needed somewhere, but it seems very esoteric for a, see, it's, it, it just seems a little too um, specific in in my opinion. That That was all I was saying as far as like tools and whatnot. So it's a technique, right? Of, uh, of Kate's, I believe. Right. Maybe <laughs> I'm not sure. I think it's, uh, yeah, I did, I did some rewording to make it sound like less specific and more like a, a challenge. No, it's not and, it. no, this is not it. Yeah. It's, That's not it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a Google concept. Pot slice GCP concept. What is it? GPC? G GCP, yeah. Uh, just pot slice. Yeah, uh, this guy. Multi slices? Multi slice, yeah. Yeah, this is kind of vendor specific, so I don't know if I. Yeah. I mean, the idea was to just talk about like managing resources, right? And that's kind of just like an example. Is that kind of the was the goal? Yeah. So that's yeah. I mean that that makes sense. But yeah, I think uh, uh, unfortunately it's a little, you know, too specific. Maybe. I think I mean, a degree yeah. of specificity would would help in understanding the challenge. But yeah, if, if there is a better way, we should seek it out. Yeah, like even in the paragraph before it, it kind of talks about like TPUs and Gaudi and FPGAs. In that all, you know, those are all the accelerators, which makes sense. But then maybe the to the point of well, what was the challenge, right? The challenge was, is maybe we can't get access due to scheduling resources. Maybe, maybe bandwidth is still an issue. Like what, like more of a, 
uh, uh, the the actual problem versus the uh, tools. I think it's okay to mention the tools, but the real challenge, like you're alluding to, is one GPU is not enough, and it has to maybe span multiple GPUs, which might be on multiple nodes or even multiple TPUs. And I think that's what it's trying to hit on. So and that's we... the concept of super pod or super slice or whatever. Thanks, Malini. Yeah, I think I think Malini, the, the paper you, or the reference from OpenAI that you shared also mentions the, the challenge around existing cube and that a node required a dedicated node with dedicated gpu is usually required but slicing is a challenge so i think that might be also a good reference for open ai so because opening. in the old days whenever you talked about a pod it always ended up on a single node that was kind of like the mapping and now we're breaking that kind of paradigm as the issue here and that's why super pod uh, but we we can word it differently. We'll we'll work on it. Just put it as a to do there. Uh, can I uh, write your name down here? Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. And then maybe Adele, you you wanna be here or? Yeah, I can I can review. Okay. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Um. This is uh this section needs uh, some performance challenges. This section needs more info info. It is unclear from the context. What are the performance issues here? And Kathy said I agree with Huamin. The writing in this section does not describe performance issues, but a solution. DRA. And so DRA is a dynamic resource allocation. Yeah. yeah, okay, so, so here we're, we're, I think this session is talking more about like a, a solution, right? New API is not to a, a challenges. I think we need to describe the challenges first. What are the challenges? And then the solutions, you know, right. can move yeah, to the, you know, a potential opportunities there. And, and I think a lot of the challenges we can just pull off from the DRAs um, description why it even exists like there's so many different gpus you know different vendors configuration is the issue sharing is an issue uh, slicing it up too like uh, serving or inference doesn't need all of a gpu so those are the things and why dra was created so instead of mentioning the solution we say the challenges and here is one solution to address those challenges and more work needs to be done. Yeah. Okay, can I'm adding your names here? Is that okay? Anybody else wants to help write in this uh, paragraphs? I can add my name myself, but anybody else wants to? I linked the paper for DRA. Maybe we could you not know, copy, but uh, reuse the challenges described there. Okay. Uh, is this the Google Doc that you share? This one, I think. Let me see. Let me verify it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's good. We can add a link. Yeah. It's yeah. about, you know, list all this. Yeah, and and I think all this, this is a solution, like you said, so we, we can move this somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, now, this is a top level uh, bullet point. And then within that top level, we have vector DB as a performance challenge, too. So, do you agree with that, that vector DB is a performance challenge or it's more like a, just a general challenge? Uh I mean, I, I, I'll, I didn't write this, but just as a general comment on all these kind of things where, you know, I, I think we, you know, it's clear, like on the performance, we need to say, what is the performance challenge? Same thing with like vector, right? Like vector databases were created because, you know, some performance issue, right? 
Um, so I think it's just missing, but then, you know, whether or not that should be moved to like an opportunity or not, um, or solution, or, right? Yeah. Or solution. So, um, you know, I just think the more we can mention maybe in the challenges, we just simply, I'm not sure what other people think, but like when you have a challenge and then we have sol solutions or opportunities, recommendations later, um, you know, it sounds like we're kind of embedding the recommendation right in in the challenge area so maybe the challenge itself shouldn't mention any tools it should be like more general right and then the actual recommendation opportunities has a chance to to fill in some of those blanks yeah i yeah. think I, I, I really i agree with this because now it looks like when i mixed you know things together some section you know are talking about challenges but like this session, it, it doesn't really talk much about challenges. It's all list of the different solutions. Yeah, I think, I mean, again, I'm speaking out of turn here, but maybe some of these things were dro dropped where they were earlier just because we, we, we know we have to add more details, you know, but these are the kind of just current answers to things we know. We just need to, to spell it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I want to re-question the entire section because Vector, yeah, yes, Vector Databases is establishing themselves as the de facto approach for things like retrieval, augmented generation, so on. Uh, but what I guess the question is, how does, look, because it's a well-known solution or approach to use Vector Databases, and I'm not talking about even the vendors or the exact implementations, but really just vector database. How, what, what are the challenges that vector databases introduces that we could solve using cloud native? And how can we describe that in the paper, if any? That that's that's a great point. Like we can definitely mention. I mean, just by the law of general purpose computing, right? We can solve anything. So. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think having a challenge, even if it doesn't have a, a conclusion, right? We can say, you know, maybe one sentence here, like, hey, Vector, for this particular problem, you know, Vector databases are addressing some aspects of it. And then, you know, further down, we can get more into like the details of like, this is why implementations of Vector databases are, you know, cloud native, uh, you know, compliant, right? Um, to get a little more tying it back to the CNCF. Or CN, I, think we I can, should say. <laughs> yeah, do we have a... Oh, wait, wait. For... Let's take a step back here. Um, we have traditional databases, and they say, hey, why leave me out? They're adding, uh, seeking to add some vector components, okay? And these traditional databases, whether it's MySQL, Oracle, SAP, they all want to get into the vector data space. Then there are vector databases that are purpose-built for vectors. And what is the number one thing about all these vectors is their high dimensionality. They can have different kinds of data. Some can be images, video, speech, whatever. And the number one thing there is a distance. How close am I to this vector versus another? And that could be parallelized. So some of these purpose-built ones are GPU friendly. So you can do a few things in parallel. It's the same, just different data, same instruction, right? I mean, check closeness. So I would suggest we peek in there, but from a cloud native perspective, then it just becomes like um, like deploying your AI training or even your AI inference. How can you map this to multiple resources so you can do some parallelization? And are you doing it parallel for one request? Are you doing it parallel, like horizontal scaling for multiple re requests? I think we have to like, you know, unwind that ball of string that, a little here. That that's great. I mean, that that's what I would be looking for in, in like a paper like this. Like, what's the problem? What's the techniques? Like you mentioned, things like we have existing systems that are well known. Then there's you know the notion of scaling and parallelization and specialization with like GPUs. And then there's ultimately our tools just generically can deploy anything. Uh, is that enough? Right, being in a container is that enough to be CN? Right. Can Kubernetes efficiently control it from scaling, you know, more and more details? Uh, yeah, what you just said uh, was was great. I, I totally agree.
It's definitely. Yeah. Okay. I'll take the action item on trying to improve this section and then you guys can give feedback. Awesome. Yeah. I, I think that, that gets us closer to like it, it, towards the end of your statement, Malini, we're getting into like the real problems that we could solve. Like I, I could imagine like when I'm deploying this to cube, what are the challenges and so on? So yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Thank you. All right, sounds good. So looks like we got that clarified. Um, so Malini, you have a comment on explaining this. This is more like a solution. It looks like a scaling DBFS or, oh no, this is like a file system, right? So. That one really bugged me because I, I work in electricity a lot. <laughs> so we use those terms there. I'm like, what is this? I'm really confused now. <laughs> oh, dynamic uh, voltage and frequency. Yeah. This is uh oh, this is for energy efficiency. Yeah, I think I think we just need to it say it happens that. even on CPU cores. Yeah. Um we call it turbo in Intel when we rise the frequency for a compute bound job so it can just run faster. But if you're doing a lot of memory accesses, there's no point running it at three gigahertz or four gigahertz. So we drop the frequency. And in so doing, we also save power. And this workload that saves power can give that same energy to some other workload that can use it type of stuff. But okay, so now I know that they have it for GPUs too is the thing here for me. Uh, well, that's even a great addition that it be, uh, I love the fact that you tied it back to just CPUs, right? So we can say like, you know, as an introductory, you know, this is all details, this paragraph. It seems like there should be a paragraph before that says, hey, you know, when it comes to energy, you know, and optimization for cost and heat and damage to your equipment, right? These kind of there's techniques that apply to CPUs and GPUs and then, you know, dive into some of this, these things in, in more yeah, detail. So we can always cap like the highest frequency you want to run at. You know, so you can stay in the linear portion too of the voltage frequency scale. Yeah, that's, that's great. And then as you guys were saying before, then ultimately how does that get tied back to cloud name, right? Like, like even if we say like, this is an example of where the system, the hardware, you know, it, it does these things, right? And, but we benefit from it. So when we scale, you know, in Kubernetes, it's, you know, the hardware is helping us here, right? You know, because it's magically mm -hmm. maintaining things. Because not everything has to be us hitting a button through Kubernetes, right? We're in an environment, you know, things are on top, things are under us. And yeah. Just and even the CSP noting that. might not even let you control these knobs, but they might do it for you. That exactly right. So I think, yeah, I think that's probably warranted in a paper like this because then, you know, it shows us that it tells people we're in an ecosystem, right? We're not mm -hmm. everything. We're, we're in the middle here. Right. So this, does everybody agree with this? Uh, this is more of a solution recommendation. So we can move this out of this section and move it more to a uh, solution recommendation. I think <laughs> it, I understood it as a, as more like a, challenge and then we're trying to frame how this challenge can be kind of mitigated or uh, approached via cloud native either better scheduling or things that come for free with a certain architecture of one of the tooling like general orchestration and cube uh, so i understood it this way where you know the, the, the concept the problem how does cloud native approach it fix it tries to fix it uh, and so on so or or in this move. case cloud native is delegating to these hardware power management capabilities that a csp might not expose but it's there for you it's working mm -hmm. under the covers we can mention it like that yeah just just even say that we don't interfere right it's one thing for us mm -hmm. to control it's another thing to play nice with your neighbors yeah. Or but even just not... be aware that this thing is in the background, maybe helping, maybe hurting, whatever, but definitely trying to help. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think actually what we have discussed so far is all centered around whether we should you know, put the solutions together with the challenges, either the solution is you know, the hardware layer combined with the orchestration layer, or it's a tooling. Uh, 
So I think we first need to agree whether we want to mix together. We want to mix together. That's okay. We put all the solutions, you know, into the challenge, you know, each challenge section. And if then there is a case, like I mentioned before, if there is a solution that solves multiple challenges, where should we put it? Um, another way is we separate all this, so we don't need to go through each, you know, in the, each, you know, tooling, each link, each solution uh, detail. If we separate it out into a separate, you know, solution section or, or opportunities section, then we can, you know, we don't need to go through all this, discuss all this. But that's my feeling. Otherwise, we may need to go through each one and say, say oh, this is this should be here. And then we were going to end up some solutions will be in the challenge section, some solutions we, we take it out. I, um, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. In, but, would... but the pros and cons, if you keep the challenge in one place and the solution right next to it, people don't have to refer back and forth. But let's call it a solution A. And then further down, there's another challenge. That same solution A can apply to that other challenge. So we have to, whichever way we go, do some cross-referencing is my my thinking. Yeah, I was just going to add one more, one more complexity to this. Uh, the what, regardless of where the recommendation or solution is, um, this dynamic voltage part. You know, we're kind of talking about things outside of just straight CN projects. Mm -hmm. um, might be an interesting thing to break out the opportunity. So maybe the recommendation section is just for where we have actual, you know, tools that we can install or use. And then the opportunities, maybe that becomes a section of things that are more environmental, right? Not just direct cloud native tech, but, you know, again, like, hey, here's a, you know, this is one of the components of the whole thing, right? You know, in this case, hardware, right? And then same thing with maybe like the kids, the kids safety, right? You know, there's debate whether or not that's security. Well, again, that's an opportunity, right? Where it's not CN tech per se, mm -hmm. right? You know, as far as flipping bits, but uh Again, it's in the environment, right? So now those things that are kind of touchy feely or out of our control are kind of in their own section, uh, you know, opportunities. And then the you know recommendations we can just leave that to like you can we do can this say or broader not do this. ecosystem or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we uh, we added a lot of information on the paper and kind of uh, makes it more complex. <laughs> so we want to try to simplify to to make it easier for the reader to digest because i mean when when you add like too many concepts and too many different things and it becomes more difficult so that's why i think in some of these things it might might be better to be addressed in later we... documents or blogs or yeah should, should we add a section called additional considerations for for the adventurers and people who wants to know more about additional challenges more like an appendix section but you know call it additional consideration then we can have this is this one is a hardware consideration for example that is not directly yeah i mean just thinking out loud no i, I like that because like references yes any hardcore person could like take a reference but or a footnote but a, a, like a if you say consideration or something like that it's more of a guide right it's 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 like hey if you're into these topics maybe go here right versus just a an enumeration of things I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, another very big thing will be, I have to run a training task. It's going to use lots of power, lots of energy, blah, blah, blah. We might have to have a mega scheduler that says, hey, move this workload to where the sun is at this point in time because there are some renewable energy sources or something. Yeah, I, I think, Malini, the correct me if i'm wrong everyone but i think we're trying to give the information not the the way it should be approached so that when someone reads the paper they can you know the challenge that you just mentioned was the sun and the energy they can say oh uh, i can you know piece this with this from what i read in the paper and i can come up with this solution end to end right we're not like the reference implementation could be one section where we cover end-to-end -end solutions but uh, I guess like piecing out the dots is one probably one of the good outcomes of this paper. Like, because we're not if we would give end to end solution to every problem we're describing in the paper, it would be a very huge one. Right, and but we're also like 
seeding people to think of these problems and come up with solutions uh, that we 100%. don't have today or whatever. Yeah. So, so that, that's why I think it's good, you know, I think it's good to, we, we have a challenging section and then we have a solution section. Nowadays, I feel it's complicated for the readers, you know, for people to read because we are mixed things together. And then when you read those solutions, right, sometimes those solutions are not just solving the challenges listed in that section. It, I think there are multiple, um, there's quite some solutions which solve multiple challenges. And also there are future solutions. What's the goal of this paper? We want, you know, um, we want to list the challenges and then we want people to think about this, how to solve it. Either it's end-to-end -end or it's a, like a, a, a standalone um, component to solve it. I feel it's, it's more clear um, we, we separate them out. Okay, we let's just take an executive decision here. Differences. We'll keep challenges yes, yes. in one place, solutions in another. But in the solutions section, we mention, hey, this addresses challenge one, two, three. So let's number our challenges so we can easily cross-reference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that sounds one thing to mention, okay. one thing to mention, I think it's phrased as opportunity, so it's not solutions, uh, okay. more or less yeah. like it's... That's a good one, yeah. I, yeah, I feel like, Kathy, you have a strong opinion on this, I, I don't have uh, that strong of an opinion, so I'll leave uh, it to everyone. <laughs> no, I don't know, I'm just noticing that this topic of debate has come up in recording one earlier in December than the second one and now, so I mean, or, or Jan, whatever. So let's just take one decision and then we go with it. it. They're all fine. They each have their strengths and weaknesses. And maybe we can um, title that section as solutions and opportunities or solutions and gaps because we haven't yet done all of them or yeah, we need a title for that section. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because we have come back to this discussion, you know, we when we have all those comments, we discuss this, you know, should this solution to open in here? I just feel we, we have spent quite some time discussing this. If we separate this out, uh, we don't need to, you know, a lot of time will be saved. Okay. I'm going to add your name here. Malini, uh, I don't know who anybody else wants to be added to this part. Okay, so this is going to involve major moves of code. And remember at the very top of this document, we said don't move lots of text around. We'll have to break that for this reorganization. <laughs> we, we can delete that comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it feels like a violation. <laughs> Uh, by the way, just to give people an estimate, maybe I, mean, I could always be slow at this, but when I refactored things without much other effort, it took me probably about three hours to make sure wow. like I didn't drop things. And so if anybody's just trying to estimate time effort, it's, it, this change might even be more because it's more, you know, nuanced, right? We're trying to break up some sections reorder versus entire areas. So just, just a warning to whoever is guilty. <laughs> Okay, um, Kathy, do you want to take this action item of reordering? Because, you know, you do want to keep the challenges and opportunity solutions separate. If you go with it, make a separate copy so you don't go crazy. And then we work with your new one after you're done. Um, yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure whether, you know, I'm good at this because those those solutions, uh, they, I think, you know, whoever right, they'll put in those solutions. They probably know best which challenges you know that solution map to. Do we can we find out who put in the, those solutions? Yeah. If I if we put if I put it right or Malini put it, we may not you know. Yeah. You know, I, in the right section, right? Yeah, I think it's about reorganizing. You just you just uh, you don't have to put every specific solution, and we can track down you know who actually added the. the yeah. Part. I, 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 the, the problem is it's phrased into the sent like the. Um, the, you know, some sentences, like the continuation of some sentences give you the, you know. Right. It, yeah, the, some the, editing is, is I mean, yeah, this is what editors are for, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so that some editing is required as Ronald was highlighting. Uh, I mean, Kathy, if, you, if you're not thinking you want to do it, I mean, I could take another swing at it. Uh, I think I get um, what everybody's asking. What, what I would propose is this, um, make just a quick 
uh, just to attempt at mm-hmm. it, uh, you know, a separate doc, just a very quick one, just so mm-hmm. we can, you know, confer that the, you know, le- like the headers, right? That the headers and maybe initial sentence uh, lines up as we think, because as they was saying, there's going to be um, editing involved. So if we can, you know, take a swing at that, and if everybody approves of that, then do the real effort of really, you know, going through the whole thing, and that'll take more I time. I get that idea. Yeah. yeah. So we're not going to my manage. Yeah. I think that's a good way. Maybe we just separate that out to the, this section, put all this out, that section, and then just roughly put it. And then we need to have the original author who put in, right? To really line up, say, okay, yeah, which. Yeah, we could ask them to come back and check. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, we can even put a table. Everybody who's made a contribution, they have to click off that they check, check, check. Then we know we've not goofed up something. Great yeah. idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like sounds like we're, we're still trying to figure out the the structure. So um, so I guess uh, what I'm hearing is that next action item is to. Uh, grab this outline and put it in some other document and make sense out of it and have everybody uh, who's interested uh, approve it, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we can get into the actual movement of things and fine tune it. I have one question. With all those bookmarks, footnotes, if we add new ones, does it get crazy because everywhere it's a number? How does it work in Google Docs so that you don't mess up things when you add a new one in between? It's automatic. Okay, cool. Okay. So you, put, you just had a footnote. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we tell the intern that they have to do it manually and watch them struggle for a few days. And then I was come. scared to do it. That's why I kept saying to do, to do, do, you know, just put it in my comment, but I didn't want to mess with it. Yeah. Okay, let's. We have we only have like two minutes, but maybe we can just go over some of these comments too. So, but maybe about. maybe just a, a quick comment. I I know we, we probably glimpse over it every time, but uh, do we still want to do this by KubeCon? If so, I think we should probably start to put some hard dates because we're getting close, and I think there's different milestones like pushing and getting review from upstream and so on. Uh, okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So the next meeting is in two weeks on the 22nd. So how about if we actually decide on what, what we're going to have by, by that meeting, right? So, yeah. I'll, I'll get uh, the, like, you know, sampled um, re-edit uh, out this weekend. And maybe we could, if we get the people here to commit to reviewing that by say sometime next week, uh, then next weekend I can do, or, may, you know, if you guys are sooner, maybe we can do, even do it earlier. The, the actual rewrite. Yeah, I guess yeah. Like, let's. Sounds yeah. good. I think that's a Sounds good. Time. And let's let's try and keep that KubeCon as our our goal because it's nice to have it advertised in the keynote and things like that. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what we want. Agree. Um, yeah. I'm doing a workshop on CNAI on March 3rd for the ACM, and uh, if we could be ready before that, I even better. Even better. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm also thinking about, you know, uh, we uh, mentioned this in the uh, CNCF TOC keynote. So let people know there mm-hmm. is that effort and white paper here. Excellent. So, Ronald, I uh, had a action item for you here. So, um, you have the structure ready by next week. Yes. And after that, then basically go through approval process right yeah yeah yeah. yep someone besides me approves yeah (laughs) my work is beautiful (laughs) approve it i promise to get it done before taylor swift shows up on your tv (laughs) (laughs) she's always there great Great. thank you so much Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Uh, uh, Bye. Any last minute things? Uh huh. So this is this is still going on. So one of the the Nate's uh, landscape. So if we we need to add some more uh, metadata with respect to the different areas and how they relate to cloud native. So if you have time, also take a stab at it. So how does general orchestration, ML serving, 
uh, CICD relate, for example, relate to cloud native. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I mean, not if you need to drop, please drop it uh, real quick, Ricardo. On yeah. that, we should probably ask Chris, like, what do they have in their database, right? Because if we, because they have something to generate the, you know, the thing, right? Um, if we map that, it might make it come to life quicker, right? So Makes sense. We, sure. Yeah. We, we can. Do Do you want to start a thread with? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll ask them. Just Just throwing it out there. Okay. Well, that's good. All right. Um, well, thank you, everyone. We'll see you next time. So let's chat on the Slack channel if you have any comments, questions, or anything you want to bring up. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone.